Hello, my name is Dan Selton, my company is Star Pro Greens. We manufacture the best putting material in the world, and we wanted to show you a video on how to install these greens outdoors, in your backyard, uh, either doing it yourself, DIY, or hiring a landscaper to do it for you. The final result is it's a lot of fun. It is a tremendous putting surface for the rest of your life once you've gotten it in, and they look really good. Star Pro Greens are made from our master putting turf, the MPT for short. With this installation that we're going to show you, the MPT will play like a real golf green. The ball rolls with exceptional realism at a stamp of a 10 to 11. We are installing our 5 by 12 factory pre-cut green surrounded by a one foot border or rough. The final size will be 7 by 14. It's an easy install we will cover all the steps in detail and give you some helpful hints. Before we get started, the tools you'll need are listed here. You can pause the video and copy them down as you see fit. The only thing you really need to rent is a plate compactor. You want to get the smallest plate compactor you can. Let's get started. When you unbox your putting green, lay it out upside down. You'll see where the five pre-cut holes are tabbed into the green. Use a brand new blade on a box cutter razor knife to tab the greens to remove the plugs. You can leave some of our plugs or use them all. To cut your own holes on a custom green, place your putting cup on the back of the green. Regulation cups are four and a quarter in diameter. Trace the putting cup with a silver Sharpie and cut down the center of the Sharpie line. Again, always use a new blade on a box cutter razor knife. Sharp is easy, dull is hard, and could make a mess. Our installation area today is covered with pine straw. Of course, you can install your green just about anywhere. If it's over grass, you simply trace the outline of the green and weed eat the grass down to the dirt. We place the putting green where you plan to install it. Next, hammer six inch spikes on each end of the green and one six inch spike in each of the golf holes to mark their location. Also mark the outline edge of the green with spikes. Since we're installing an optional one foot border on our site, we use a shovel to mark a one foot area around the green. Then roll up the green, being careful to keep the hole and edge spikes in place so you know exactly where to replace the green later. Now we prepare the site. Since we're removing pine straw, we'll rake the area clean and level. If you're installing over grass, you'll need to use a string trimmer to cut the grass down to the bare dirt and blow away all of the debris. Your base site must be level and not in a depressed area where rainwater drains or collects. You can put a drain line under the green if you need to. If there's too much slope, read how to level a slope for putting green installation. Your grade should not exceed a three inch rise over a 10 foot run, unless you want a green that is roller coastery, uh, not realistic. Fill any deep valleys and level any ridges caused by roots or rocks by removing them. Now it's time to dig out the dirt where you've marked the five golf holes. One full shovel full of soil from each hole should be enough to put the cup in later on. So you dig out the hole and then you fill the hole with gravel. Be sure to return the spike marker to the center of each hole so you know where to align your green later. Now it's time to add a minimum of two inches of gravel, three eighths minus with the fines over the entire area of the green plus any amount you want for contouring. We went with three inches on this site because we wanted to have a little more contour than typical. The gravel lets you create contours and breaks to make your putting green as challenging as a real green. Do not use pea gravel or sand. To ensure your green will drain properly and hold its shape for years, it's very important to use a particular type of gravel. It's called 3 8 minus or 3 8 screening, which means your gravel supplier has passed 
travel through a 3 8 inch screen, so only the right pieces pass through. This mix has gravel up to 3 8 of an inch and smaller. Buying gravel can be confusing, so at the end of this video, we'll show you exactly what type to buy and also what not to buy, so be sure to watch that piece. You'll need a minimum of 12 pounds of base gravel per square foot of putting green and board. This will raise your green two inches above the surrounding soil. To level the area, you can use the back of a garden rake or drag a, a short two by four across it. There should be no indentations in the green. Round down the base under the border to the edge. Your green should sit two inches above the surrounding soil. It looks better, plays better, and lasts long if you do this. Be sure to keep your hole marker and edge spikes in place so you know where to replace the green. Now it's time to compact the gravel base. You can use a hand tamper for our smaller greens, but we recommend you rent a small plate compactor from your home store for anything above the 7x14. Try not to compact in rows. This could create tracks and ridges on your putting surface. You want to move it around like it's almost a waxer. When the base is compacted and smooth, Roll out the putting green lined up with your markers and put in all directions to check the contours and the speed of putt. If needed, fold up the green or roll it up to add or remove gravel to change the way the ball rolls. Use the hand tamper at this point to keep it smooth. Now we're ready to install the in-ground golf cups. Take a piece of cardboard, lay it on the putting green, and then take a small trowel and dig out the gravel so the top of the cup will be 1 8 of an inch above the surface of the base. Set the cups in by gently stepping on them. When all the cups are dug in, roll up the green and add base where it may have fallen into the hole when you were digging it out. Then compress the gravel around the cup with a 2 by 4 level or the hand tamper. Replace the green and check the cup height one final time. You can pull them up gently or gently step down on them. You want them to be 3 8 of an inch below the surface of the green. That's about perfect. As you can see in this example photo, your green can be surrounded with natural grass, mulch, brick type paver, or a stone edging. We are going to add our optional StarPro Green Rough slash chipping border to this green. Borders look great, allow you to practice chipping from the rough and stop the fast putt that you've missed from rolling off the green. For our Star Pro green borders, unroll the border roll and remove the pre-cut pieces by cutting the tabs using your razor knife. You can check the diagram on the website to match the border pieces to the green. They should match perfectly. The border is attached to the green using our seam tape. It does not have an adhesive and is used in combination with an adhesive you buy from your local home improvement store. Use only glues that say they bond polyethylene and polypropylene. You'll need about one standard tube for every 10 to 15 linear feet of seam tape. Cut the seam tape into three to four foot sections and lay them half under the putting green edge. Lay all the border pieces on top of the outer half of the seam tape. Then roll back the border and the green over one section of the seam tape and weight down the edges with bricks. Apply the adhesive in a zigzag S-shaped pattern. Then press the green and border back into place on the tape. The final step is walking down the seam. You just walk down both sides of the seam to make sure that there's a firm attachment between the putting green, the border, and the seat. Okay, well, we've, we've finished installing the green. We've added five cups. We're using one ball pull marker. The border's in, gently rounded, and then we decided to add a little landscaping to kind of pick up the area. Um, it's turned out, I think, very, very well, and I think it adds value to the house. The landscaping and the putting green, just add, it'll add value. And it's a whole lot of fun for friends uh, and kids. They love it. So I'm gonna take a couple of shots, show you how it turned out. We completed installing this green and border in one day. 
it's easy to do yourself or just show this video to any landscaper who can help you install it. Now here's the important information you need for the exact type of gravel for your installation of a putting green. For the StarPro green installation, we only want to use the 3 8 minus gravel over your surface. But there are other gravels that you'll hear about when you go to the gravel store or the stone store. We just want to make sure you understand and weren't confused about the different types that are available and what not to use. We'll start with a, what we call road base. Road base can be used if you have a very sandy soil. You can put two to four inches of road base under our 3 8 minus gravel. But this is road base. It's got giant stones up to uh, an inch and you have to compact this down under our two inches of 3 8 minus. But road base is not workable for our product because this three quarter inch or one inch stone can actually put a dent in our green. So we keep away from road base unless we're going down, unless we're digging down, excavating, and then going back in um, with the 3 8 minus. So this is road base. Next is the 3 8 gravel. A 3 8 gravel is great, but you can't use just 3 8 gravel. It's got to have the fines. If you use 3 8 gravel, it's going to crunch when you walk on it. This is the 3 8 gravel. It's 3 8 of an inch, and if it's mixed with fines 50 50, it's worthwhile and useful. But by itself, it's going to crunch, and you're not going to be happy with it. So 3 8 is what we want 50% mix um, with the finer pieces. So 3 8 gravel looks like this. Going from there, we go to the fines. Some people call this quarter minus. And this is the finer pieces of gravel. There are all kinds of names for it. But this can't be used by itself because it washes. And so you need to mix it with the 3 8 gravel and end up with a, basically, a mixture of 3 8 gravel and the fines or a 3 8 screening, which is 3 8 gravel that is run through a screen with all the finer pieces from being crushed. So you end up with 3 8 a quarter, a sixteenth, all the way down to heavy, heavy grit crushed gravel. All right. This is pea gravel. We hear this used a lot. Pea gravel is not good from a putting perspective for anything except possibly a decorative border. If it's underneath even the road base, it'll shift. You can see that it's very round and so it does not compact together. It stays loose. You walk on it, it walks down. And so it has nothing, you don't want any kind of pea gravel used with your putting green. And sand, that's another issue. Sand used to be very popular, but it does not hold its form. It walks down. You can't use it for contours. Some people use it for a final finish layer, but it, we're talking a quarter of an inch max. You're not supposed to use sand because it will not hold its form. It walks down. So sand is not where you want to be. Um, you can infill with sand, the border or the green if you want to speed it up, but you do not want to use sand in the base, period. You just don't want to use it. It does not hold its form. It doesn't hold up. Finally, we have the 3 8 minus. It's got the 3 8 stones and then all the stones going down from there. And this is your 3 8 gravel. You can see the largest stone is 3 8 of an inch. And if you compact it, it holds its form. And that's what you're after. It drains, it compacts nicely, and it holds its form when it's walked on under the green. So 3 8 minus gravel is what we're looking for. It's the most important factor in the installation period. Find that 3 8 gravel or make it with 3 8 gravel mixed 50-50 with the fines. Any questions? You can call us at starprogreens.com and we'll answer. Thank you.